Hey friends, welcome or welcome back. If you're new around here, my name is Leah and I'm the Redheaded Witch. So to get started, we are enjoying a cup of our Daybreak Blend. If you don't know, I own a small business called Full Craft Coffee and Goods. We sell small batch coffee um, and we have two coffees right now. We have our Daybreak Blend, which is kind of like our house blend. It's a blend of Peruvian and Ethiopian. So it has a really nice sweet floral taste to it along with some chocolatiness. And it's a bit lighter on the end of the medium uh, roast spectrum. Then we have our seasonal one, which is Midsummer. This is a single origin from Honduras and it's a natural wash. So it's also a little bit on the lighter end and it has some really beautiful fruit flavors such as strawberry and cherry and it has some honeyness to it as well. Both of them I have enjoyed both hot and cold. Today we're doing a hot brew with a break. Now for today's conversation, I was really inspired by the fact that my good friend Ella Harrison, who is another creator here on YouTube and Instagram, she recently just purchase a book that I found to be really helpful for me to build my personal practice and that is Folk Witchcraft by Roger J. Horn. So today's conversation was inspired by this book but also I have been doing a lot of self-reflection. I've talked about it in my recent videos of how I'm kind of in this liminal space with my personal life right now and I found myself revisiting a lot of my personal foundations and including my own practice. Now if you're new around here and unfamiliar with my personal practice, um, I practice a form of witch witchcraft that is inspired by my ancestors. My ancestors are deeply rooted in the Appalachian Mountains and therefore I find a lot of inspiration of their ancestors from England and Scotland. This has been an ongoing discovery for myself and really deepening my personal practice with my ancestral spirits as well as my own spirit. So a lot of it is a lot of personal healing, um, being someone who doesn't have a very strong foundation with family and it really is about trying to find my place in the world and uh, kind of where I fit in in terms of my chosen family and my community. When I first started practicing witchcraft, it was really influenced by Wicca. A lot of books that we read today and are available to us have some Wiccan influence. And I won't dismiss the fact that Wicca had some influence on me in terms of how I connected to the seasons, but there was just something about it that really did not resonate with my spirit. So I embarked on a personal journey where I found myself really focusing on North American folk magic, mainly because I live in North America. That's when I came across the work of Cory Thomas Hutchison from New World Witchery. His work was so informative when it came to the New World Witchery and how a lot of it was influenced by so many different cultures that were coming into North America. However, I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into my personal ancestry. So then I started to do my personal research of my ancestors and really trying to find where they derived from. That led me to certain regions within Europe such as Scotland and England, including Poland on my mother's side. So this kind of opened up a whole different doorway of integrating my ancestral practices and what that may have looked like while also being cautious and respectful. Then came along this book and it was super eye-opening to recognize that to build a folkloric traditional witchcraft practice, which is how I really describe my own, is connecting to the lore, the land, and to spirits. Now that's a pretty big umbrella term. This is going to look so different for everyone, especially depending on where the individual and practitioner currently resides, as well as their own ancestral roots and what resonates and how they connect with them. So this conversation is more of just an introductory into some of the things that you may think about when kind of creating your own magical path. I do dive deeper into this conversation with an upcoming creative project of mine that I will be announcing in just a few days. Sorry, I can't believe I actually am doing that. I have been alluding to this creative project of mine for almost a year now and I finally have the opportunity to share it and it is something that is so close to my heart and soul and just something I put so much passion into and I'm so excited to be able to share that with you all soon. I will be announcing this on Instagram first so if you don't already follow me there, go ahead and do so. I do have a little countdown in terms of when I will be announcing it which will be this Sunday. And honestly, it's the best birthday present I probably could have had for myself. Anyways, back to the conversation of creating your own magical path. In Roger J. Horn's book, he first discusses the lore. 
The lore in this book discusses kind of researching historical witch trials and grimoires for inspiration. This information really does help us kind of see what, what witches back in the 15th century were practicing and kind of their own personal beliefs. He also very quickly touches on the old ones which are in reference to the spirits or deities that were pre-Christian era. Now when it comes to furthering our research with deities or the old ones in pre-Christian eras, we have to remember that a lot of the times these records are being um, restructured by a perspective that wasn't necessarily someone who was practicing or worshiping these deities. And that's because a lot of the native individuals who were local to the regions and worshiping these deities did not necessarily keep records of such rituals or deities in the first place. So when individuals were coming about and kind of bringing forth their own religious beliefs, they were recording what they saw based on the natives and the individuals that they came across. I'm more specifically thinking about how the Romans came into Britain that we know of today. Individuals who were native to the Britain land prior to Romans, you know, they did not keep records of their rituals or deities. So a lot of the breadcrumbs that we see today are just artifacts that we were able to rediscover, as well as the recordings from Romans who bear witness to the rituals and had the conversations with the individuals that resided there first. So knowing this information, we kind of have to view the perspective of deities that we know of today with kind of like a different lens of this is just based on what the recordings that we have from the Romans as well as any stories that were being retold. Now if you play the game phone you know that uh, a lot of the times when stories are being told or when something's being told and it's being retold and retold and retold again and again and again uh, a lot of the times you kind of end up with a completely different story based on what was originally said. And this is just how communication happens in general, even today. So when you're researching the lore of um, the witch trials, historical documentation, or anything that is pre-Christian era, it is always helpful to keep that in mind, especially when it comes to the historic documentation of witch trials. A lot of individuals that were in these witch trials were not necessarily individuals who practiced the craft. A lot of the times they were outcasted and there was either some sort of rivalry that was happening within the village. This could have been like a healer who provided some sort of ailment to a neighbor and all of a sudden the neighbor became more sick. Therefore, they were able to to kind of accuse the individual who was trying to help them of witchery because it made them worse and therefore kind of would equate to like a curse or a hex. Then you kind of remember too that a lot of individuals who were in these trials were being tortured under circumstances that we can't even fathom today. So a lot of the times they ended up admitting to witchery even if that wasn't something that they were doing just to essentially end the turmoil that they were experiencing in prison. If you're looking for a deeper dive into these um, particular witch trials and historical documentation, I highly recommend the book Healing the Witch Rune by Celeste. She is a mutual of mine and I was so grateful to be able to take a read at this book and she really does the historical documentation justice to get a better understanding of how those time periods can affect us today and also just the negative connotation behind the word witch. So the lore that Roger J. Horn describes in the first section of the book is really rooted in the um, lore behind witches, the historical documentation. I would extend to that um, for me personally this inspired looking at the lore of my own family. Now this can look like family stories, um, this can look like you know where our families are from, any sort of traditions that we may know of today that were passed down to us. The second part that he talks about is reconnecting to the land. Now as an animus witch this is such an important part of my personal practice. It's just connecting to the land around me and this has taken some adjustment as you know if you have been here a while you know that I recently moved to the west coast from the east coast and this takes some time. So be patient with yourself if you haven't already built a relationship to your local land. I would also say that that extends to the land of which your ancestors resided. So for example, if you had some family that um, lived in the nearby state or a nearby county, it's always so insightful to go and visit if you're able to. This is just one of the ways that you can kind of reconnect to your ancestral roots. However, if you are trying to connect to ancestors from afar, such as myself, then it might be a little bit more complicated. However, researching the lore of the land of your ancestors is still doable today with the resources that we have. And I always implore individuals to be able to go and visit if that is something that you're able to do. The experience that you get is just unmatched. Not only are you able to connect to the land, but also the people within the area. I'm very lucky at the fact that my 
in-laws and my um, partner's side of the family reside in England, so we always try to take a trip every other year. And knowing that I had ancestral spirits from regions within England, I can now map out areas that I would want to go and visit to reconnect with. However, I would not dismiss the fact that it is so important to connect to the land around you. If we can learn anything about the cunning folk and witches back in the day, it's the fact that they really had an intimate relationship with their surroundings. They also utilize the tools that were around them, including the plants. So cultivating that relationship with your land can be so important when building the foundation for your magical practice. Because not only are you learning about the folklore of the land around you, the spirits that reside there, but you're also being able to connect to their personal energies and work with them within your own craft. Since moving to the Pacific Northwest, I had no idea that I would be surrounded by so much hawthorn. Hawthorn is a plant ally that I'm familiar with based on the folklore that I've read from the places of which my ancestors resided in Britain. And though I was familiar with this tree, I never actually came across it personally. But the neighborhood that we moved to is quite literally surrounded by hawthorn trees. Over the years since living here, I have built that connection with them. Them. Just spending time with them, singing to them, witnessing their own personal cycles around the seasons. And I feel like that fosters such a deep connection to them. And in turn, they have been such great allies when it comes to matters of the heart and protection. Lastly, he talks about the spirit. Now, connecting to the other world is something that I haven't spoken about a whole lot in depth on my channel. Now, hedge riding or spirit flight was something that I integrated later in my practice. I wasn't completely familiar with the practice or how to even go about it. But after reading this book, I really saw how much much benefit there is and also it was another way of communicating to the spirits that I work with in my practice whether that that be ancestral deities or even animals and plants in my perspective the other world is the spiritual realm now based on your personal beliefs in divinity and if you follow certain beliefs based on your family's culture then this can influence how you kind of view the other world or how you connect with it for me personally I believe that there are areas within our physical realm that allow us to step into the other world and there are other practices that allow us to step into the other world, such as meditation and trance work. I do intend to do another video on hedge riding or spirit flight. However, if you're interested in kind of what that may look like, I did include a guided meditation to the other world in my previous video of Full Craft Fables. In this series, I really want to create some guided meditations specifically for witches and practitioners. I found it really difficult to find guided meditations that really resonated with me. So I kind of took it upon myself to create them instead. Roger J. Horns does cover some ways to conjure spirits, as well as connecting with your familiar spirit and even what a familiar spirit is. That was one thing that I learned early on in my practice was what a familiar spirit actually was. I think there was a lot of misinformation being passed around and I couldn't really get to the root of it. But Roger J. Horn was really great into explaining what a familiar spirit is and how to even connect with one. So if anything, here are some takeaways that I hope you can get from this video. The building foundations for a folkloric traditional witchcraft practice are connecting to the lore, the land, and spirits. I would first begin connecting to your local land first before trying to connect with lands abroad based on your own personal ancestry. I would also dive deep into the lore of witch trials and historical documentation, as well as any pagan beliefs that were pre-Christian era or even how that translated into the Christian era when that became the dominated religion. Oftentimes you will see a lot of blending happening, but that's a conversation we'll have a different time. And lastly, I recommend getting in touch with what spirit flight is or hedge writing and kind of what your personal belief of the other world may be. If you're curious of the other world and kind of exploring these different realms, give the guided meditation a try that I did in my previous video. Okay, I think that is it for today. <laughs> I did not realize that this would be such a lengthy video. I do hope it kind of sparks some curiosity or has you asking yourself some questions that you can take to your grimoire and kind of reflect on. Do stay tuned for a special announcement um, for something that will further explore this conversation this weekend. And as always, thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in the next 